What the f*** is we doing? What am I? But anyways, episode 10. Um, this week's... Hey, hey. Well, it's, it's the same one, but anyways. Talking about... Um, safety net. Within the finance realm. Safety net. Uh, the importance. Uh, how does it look like? How much should it be? And the, I think, what, did I write the importance? No. He's drunk. Not really. Um, <laughs> with one shot? No. Um, no the guy's no, been like, going to the gym, you know, he's been eating healthy, his tolerance is low. Oh, that's true. Um, I haven't been drinking the most. Just saying. Ah, but anyways, safety net. Simple words. My guy, what does it mean? Safety net? Um, well, it depends on the circumstances, but right now in finance, it's just, well, it's a couple of different things, right? Um, emergency, emergency Emerging savings, fund. emergency funds, right? Um, different streams of income, mm-hmm. and then just your ability to, regardless of what happens financially to you, able to withhold and withstand whatever financial burdens come your way. Right, it's, it just means that no matter what the next six to 12 months looks like for you, you know that you can survive. Yeah. I will put it on that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the, the most important thing, I think is the emerging, emergency fund. Okay. So um, I think that's kind of like the, the top. That's like the that, bread, that like that's the foundation. That's, yeah, there you go, that's the foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long should it be, or how much should it be? Uh, you should. It was dependent um, on income and living expenses, right? Yeah, no, it, it it's actually on the needs of the person. Everybody has different needs. Right. Everybody has different rents. Everybody eats differently. Everybody has diff. I think you know when you break things apart, it's like needs, wants, needs and wants. Yeah. Um. So needs is the things that you cannot survive with. Without food, without. rent, um, electricity utilities if you go to the gym your gym membership <laughs> uh, to be honest that's i have that included on my on my it's a necessity yeah uh haircuts mm-hmm. bond bill mm-hmm. um just to give us some examples but just look around you i think uh looking at yourself looking at your daily day day to day um what is something that you need to survive mm-hmm. to like maintain that lifestyle that you have also because it also depends on the lifestyles like you can significantly decrease your lifestyle expenses by let's say not eating out but let's say one of your like for me weekends never cook in my house always eat out so that's but I have that included as my need okay because that's my lifestyle right you know uh, but yeah so I think that's needs now take that number add everything up multiply it by six six months Keep mm-hmm. in mind, do this on a monthly basis. Like right. How much in a monthly are you exp- uh, are you spending mm-hmm. on this specific need? Multiply, well, add everything up per month. Let's say is like one thousand and five hundred or might be higher, like for because rent people. is expensive. Yeah, for most people, it's yeah. a lot more. Yeah, probably like two thousand or three thousand. Yeah, like whatever. Multiply that by six. That's the bare minimum that you can do. The higher, the from better. six and up, the better. Usually like a six to 12 range as a multiple is probably the ideal. Six to right? 12. Six being the low end, 12 being the high end. Because okay, if you really? start saving too much, um, there's better it's ways the to utilize that money. Um, but again, that all really just de- uh, depends on like how you invest, where you put your money, all that. The, the thing is that this money, you don't want it sitting down in the bank. Right. Definitely, you want it to be accessible when you need it, mm-hmm. but definitely don't put it just in a in a bank, like you know, like in your checkings, maybe in a savings account. Right now, uh, interest rates are high, four uh, percent, five, almost, 4%. almost five, yeah. Uh, put it in a saving account or an investing account mm-hmm. that is easily reachable, but it's specifically just for this, mm-hmm. like that money, and you can just keep adding to it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That, that's kind of I have a monthly 
At the yeah, end. the way I would do it is like aggressively <laughs> build up the emergency fund. The bare minimum. To the bare minimum, and then you can maybe have a recurring uh, investment, investment where like it's just passively inputting money on a monthly or weekly basis. Exactly. But it's not as much as you were when you were significant or uh, aggressively trying to build up the fund. Right, and also it's not um, as much as in your regular portfolio, right. like your investment portfolio. Right, right. And also, you don't want to hold high risk stocks. The thing is that the worst case scenario is that you need it tomorrow. Right. The best case scenario is that you never use it. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. Mm -hmm. So um, you want something safe that is not gonna lose. Like you don't, you cannot go and buy the stocks of Tesla on all the money. You know, well, you, you want could. <laughs> it's really not. It's a not a great idea, but you could. Yeah, it's not as smart because you want something that is gonna be reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always gonna like give you some cash back, like. You know, an index fund. Dividend stocks, right? Oh, dividend stocks like SPY, X, no. Yeah, SPY. No, no, Why, no. That's the, that's the overall market. The one with the high dividends. SPYD, okay. highest dividend. Um, so maybe just the ETF, the index fund, and it just pays you into the in dividends and they never, or oh, usually rarely go like, you know, drops. The price of the, the price asset of the really asset, drops. Yeah. You just get paid a dividend for holding it. Exactly. So that's that's where you want to allocate that money. So definitely don't just leave it sitting there. Uh, but yeah, bare minimum six months. Mm, I usually don't really care the high end, as long as you know you that you you meet the requirement the that minimums. is six months, and then yeah. And so what? Why do we need that? Okay. Well, I mean, again, since we're kind of just following up the conversation that we just had. Um, when a situation like this happens, right, with a recession or people getting laid off, mm -hmm. if you unexpectedly have this happen and you are not prepared, what ends up happening to most people? Who, people who live paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. the stress, yep. trying to find a job, mm -hmm. anxiety, especially if you have dependents or a family, mm -hmm. I think that's the worst. For somebody like even suicide like a lot of people yeah they they do go crazy about it uh mental health is gonna go to shit if you don't have this if you if, let's say the thing is that um well the idea of a safety net of just having an emergency fund is that in those six months however you can manage to find uh another secure job right that's kind of like the idea of it like yeah this is not supposed to last you the rest of your life like, exactly this is supposed yeah. to be a way to manage your life for the next six months until you can figure out a way to start making pa uh, active income again. Right. So it, it, uh, there you go. So it might not be a job. But it might be kind of like a uh, maybe a new business. Maybe mm -hmm. your business fell. So you have the safety net there. Yeah. So then you can try it again. Yeah. That's kind of like the idea. So it doesn't really have to be around the idea of a job. Mm -hmm. Now. What's the ideal though? I think there is an ideal, and I personally not there yet. Mm -hmm. But it's having passive income, right. and you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what are some of the assets that can give you that? So there's a very there's a wide selection of assets that you can have. Um, but again, you're mentioning specifically with the passive income assets, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously you have things like real estate. That's usually the number one. Um, is it passive though? That's what I mean. That. Somebody from the same industry told me, like housing or like rentals are not much of a passive because you still have gotta do work. Sure. You know? I mean, you can have somebody be property yeah. manager, right? Mm -hmm. Of your, of the, of the one or the multiple locations you may have in terms of real estate. But it is passive though. It, it, it can be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also have things like dividend stocks, right? Where they pay you for holding them, and if they appreciate in value, then. Not only are you getting money for holding it, but you're also getting money from the fact that the asset appreciated. Mm -hmm. Right, but the the way that that works is that if you hold in a hundred k, that's a good passive income. Yeah, fund, let's say on that specific. Yeah, so like take a stock like Coca Cola, right? Mm -hmm. Coca Cola gives off a, like I think a three point four or five. Four, I think four percent, like, almost in the five percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so <coughs> that's a company that's what's 
withheld the test of time, right? In terms of value, it's yeah. actually appreciated mm -hmm. uh, pretty much year over year. Uh, pays a high dividend. So if you have a lot of capital into it, again, you're getting money from two fronts there that are both passive where mm -hmm. you're investing in the company and you're also in getting money from the dividend returns. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's good. What else? What other passive assets? Passive. <laughs> Yeah, definitely the housing. The housing is one. Um, there's definitely other things that you can look into it. Like, um, yeah. Give me one more. So we no, go like, let's say YouTube video. Like, okay. There like you go. Digital. Oh, there you go. So, digital. so that kind of goes away from like assets and more into like... Oh, right, right, right. Okay, assets. Regarding assets. Uh, watches can be good ones. Oh, wow, perfect. If there you, you go. If you, if you just buy a Rolex, just hold it in. And when you need the money, just sell that, and most likely so it'll be appreciated. So a good, right? So something like gold, right? Or gold, yeah. um, minerals or things that people mm -hmm. hold value on, right? So things like gold, silver, um, copper for some people. These elements that the earth produces that people pay a lot of money for. Those are assets that not necessarily pay you for holding or mm -hmm. for like just having it, like a dividend stock. But they appreciate in value over time because it becomes so rare. Again, something like a Rolex. Um, there's a lot. It's like literally there's a thousand different things that you can invest in. Boom. Uh, this just came to my head. A book. Mm. A good book mm -hmm. that you can write. Mm. And that's, if it's, you know, bestseller or if it just becomes really yeah. popular, mm -hmm. people are going to keep buying it. Something like a Harry Potter. Not much of that. Well, yeah. You know how much money that lady, yeah. the author, has? Yeah, she did. Yeah. I mean, I think aside of the awesome. controversies, but she doesn't believe in uh, trans or gay people. Or at least that's the the going theory. The oh, author really? of Harry Potter. I thought Harry Potter was all about like <laughs> going out from the closet. No. I I really thought like that was the the no. thing behind no. that. Oh. Anyway, again, that's besides the point. Facts. And I don't even have all my facts. So I don't even know if that's 100% accurate. But um, something like a book becomes a passive income in the sense that you get paid royalties for... Royalties. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that too. I was going to go with the pattern. The yeah. internet patterns that you yeah. just own a pattern yeah. or something. That's also a good passive income. Um, maybe like just holding uh, a chair position within the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Probably neither of us have experienced that, but that is something that people do yep. for passive income. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think those are things, but uh, the most kind of like best asset that you can have is just a skill yep. on one thing that you're good at, that people are willing to pay money for. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best asset that you can have, then you can start kind of like freelancing and start generating more money from there. So. Yeah, so the more specialized you become, the more valuable you are, right? Um, again, it doesn't necessarily, because again, we're diving a lot into different realms of mm -hmm. just safety net, right? Because again, we have aspects of like passive income, we have aspects of active income, right? right. And re realistically, safety net is a, an ability to have multiple streams of income mm -hmm. that are passive and active, right? Yeah. You should be able to, again, if you lose your work, your job. Your you, active, all your active income, let's say. Let's say you lose all the active income that you have to purposely put in hours at an office to generate income. You have stuff to fall back on that's mm -hmm. giving you money. Right. And additionally, you have a fund that you that can you grab money. money from whenever you need because it's there for that purpose. Right. Another thing too is that, um, let's say even if you have investments, mm -hmm. let's say like a good portfolio, mm -hmm. The idea is that you don't touch the money. Uh, that's the idea of a safety net. Yeah. So like, even if you have the money to like survive for like two or three years, you don't touch the money. Yeah. I think that's kind of like the idea of it. Yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, you just growing. You you wanna keep growing. Yeah. So you wanna find ways to create active incomes rather than uh, being surviving of your savings. Yeah. Because like at the end of the day, like. The more you're forced to grow, the better you become, and the better you become, the more you can. Again, it's not just to have money for the sake of having it, but having it for 
the need of a safety blanket or mm -hmm. having it to do whatever it is that you would like to do. So let's say you want to take on an entrepreneur venture, mm -hmm. right? Like you're tired of working in a corporate office. There you go. You've generated a shit ton of money, uh, but now it's time for you to go out on your own. You don't know how long it's going to take you to be successful, but you have money to fall back on exactly. until we can make this work. Or if you find that it's not going to work, then fine, you still have enough money to survive and then maybe go back into the corporate world again and figure out a different plan of action. Exactly. Yeah, that's I think that's that's what safety and safety net is. Very important, crucial. I think every person should have one. Mm -hmm. And it could be a thousand dollars, can be a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and it, yeah, exactly. But it, it, it starts small. Like it sometimes it's hard to say like you mentioned, like you just put all your money there. Yeah. No. The goal is to reach that bottom. Like that, the, the minimum. The six months. The six months period. And then? But from there, you can do like a small amount. But I think the goal is like, just see where you spend your money, see the, the you know, like the things that you don't need, mm -hmm. like the ones that you spend your money, and just put that into a, there. It's gonna grow eventually. It might take like, even years for some people, because like, you think about your family as well. Yeah, because it could be like $20 a week, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe. Whatever you have. The things that, watch, like if you have a family, as a man, you want you gotta think about all the children and your wife. Right. How can I sustain them? So it's a huge six month kind of like a safety net right. and for like for somebody like me, right. who just is single, yep. no compromises, and no kid. Right. So it's imagine like my portion, somebody with a family. Yeah. So that's why I said like don't think much about the t the timeline that it takes you to get to them to the bottom. It's just that you're making progress towards it. I think that's the important thing that I, I, will, I will kind of wrap up with. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's basically it. Yeah. Anyways, safety net important. Good to have. Cheers. Cheers. Cool. <sighs> this is a conversation between friends. None of what is said here should be taken as legal advice. We are not experts in any way. Take what resonates and leave the rest.